In case you haven't noticed, there's been a growing number of cars these days that are colored like mud. Apparently, the trend started 10 years ago by Audi when it released the RS7 sedan in a flat gray shade without metallic or pearl. Audi called it Nardo Gray. I personally, I find it gnarly. Or just look at the Taycan or Panamera in a similar gray shade, which Porsche proudly calls chalk. Or BMW M3 in lime rock gray, Kia Stinger in wolf gray, or Toyota RAV4 in Lunar Rock. Now I don't care what fancy name car companies are calling these muted earth tones. I just see what I see. And what I see are silly pigeons and putty. Today, we're looking at what drives car color trends. We'll also see which car colors have the best and worst appreciation and resale values, which colors get ticketed for traffic violations the most, and I'll bust the myth about color and thermodynamics. And stay tuned to hear what's the best exterior color among 2022 and 2023 cars. You'd think that with all the advances in modern paint technology and the fact that we have access to more colors and types of paint, the car should get less boring. But it's actually the opposite. At the beginning of the 20th century, car colors were based on bright colors and painted horse carriages. By the time the 1920s rolled around, some cars were even painted in four different colors. Some Lincoln models even had birds and butterflies painted on them. Around that same time, GM worked with the DuPont Chemical Company to create something known as pyroxylene. This substance could be mixed with pig to create an entire spectrum of car paint colors to choose from. In the 1930s, metallic paints started to appear. By the way, they were actually made from real fish scales. To make 2.2 pounds of metallic paint, you needed 40,000 herring. That's why these paints were only reserved for the rich. Flash forward to the 1960s, hippie buses painted with flowers and rainbows started popping up, but trends continued to evolve. And by the time the 2000s rolled around, color was out and grayscale was in. I'm talking about cars going white, gray, and black. If you're wondering how we came to boring, well, there's a few reasons why. For starters, in the early 2000s, silver and gray were perceived to be futuristic colors. It conveyed modern and sci-fi. Another reason comes down to something we use every day, technology. In the 2000s, Apple made white popular again. White started to be marketed as clean, crisp, simple, and pristine. Yet another reason why grayscale colors are so popular today comes down to the 2009 recession. We still haven't fully bounced back from that. Then add the millions of jobs that were lost during the pandemic, plus inflation on top of that, and you can imagine why people chose to save money on their car by going grayscale. Grayscale colors are usually for base models, whereas vibrant colors are used on premium models to make them stand out in a showroom. That's why today you're likely to see a luxury car painted in exotic colors. Luxury consumers want to stand out and show off. Believe it or not, your car's color does matter. Let's say you want to resell your car. You might not realize this, but the color of your car impacts your car's depreciation and resale value. Surprisingly enough, one study found that yellow is the car color that holds its value the most. It depreciates 70% less than average vehicles. Ironically, it's because it's one of the least popular car colors and is normally found on sports cars and other rare cars. Orange and beige are two other colors that see low depreciation. On the flip side, since white, black, gray, and silver are the most popular cars, Car colors. You can expect an average depreciation rate. And if you're wondering what car color has the highest depreciation rate, well, it's brown. So if you have a brown car you want to resell, you want to sell it sooner rather than later. Car color also has some correlation with car accidents. One study found that you're 47% more likely to be in a car crash if you drive a black vehicle. Other studies have found that driving a black car increases the risk of a car crash by 10 to 20%. The reason is that black cars can be difficult to see, especially at night. Black cars also blend into various surroundings, making it less visible to other drivers. Evidently, the safest car color is white. One study found that white cars are 12% less likely to be involved in a car accident than black ones at any time of the day under any conditions. White cars are easier to notice and spot. But another study found that yellow cars are actually the safest on the road because they're the brightest color and stand out in all conditions. There's the myth that red cars get ticketed the most for speeding and other traffic violations. But actually, red is the second most color to get pulled over. Evidently, white cars get pulled over the most statistically. The third and fourth car colors to get pulled over are silver and gray. Now, if you're wondering why white cars get pulled over and ticketed more than red cars, well, the thing is, there just aren't as many red cars on the road as there are white ones. Last year, 2022, some 77% of all cars on the road were on the grayscale spectrum, meaning that they were either gray, black, and you guessed it, white. In fact, white cars are actually the most popular car color at present. Grayscale colors are neutral to consumers, and they typically perceive them to be easier to clean.
Now there's a myth that white cars stay cooler in the heat and black cars get hotter. So is that true? Well, in a nutshell, yes, it is. It all comes down to something called thermodynamics. Basically, colors are the result of what type of light a surface reflects. Black absorbs all visible parts of the light spectrum, and it turns that light energy into heat. The more light energy, the more heat. On the flip side, white and silver reflect light. That means less energy gets absorbed and therefore less heat. And this scientific principle applies everywhere, not just to your car. Just think how hot you get when you wear a black t-shirt the summer as opposed to feeling cooler when you wear white. When it comes to cars, because the body of the car is metal, it emits more heat than fabric or any other material. Energy and heat also distribute a lot faster in a dark painted metal than any other color. So if you want to beat the heat in the summer, white and silver paint is the way to go. That all said, the car industry has seen innovations in car colors and color technology. Believe it or not, not too long ago, the world's first ever color changing technology came out. It enabled the car to change between black, white, and gray at the push of a button. This might sound like science fiction, but it's real. While it might look like the paint is changing color, it's actually not the paint that's changing. It's laminated on a plastic film. The technology is similar to what you find in a Kindle that uses a one pigment e-link system. The technology is to switch colors on the cars made up of millions of hair thin micro capsules on a grid. Inside each capsule are tiny negatively charged black and positively charged white particles. So when a corresponding electrical charge is applied, the white or black particles will rise to the top. White particles on the top turn the car white, and black particles on the top turn the car black. The current can go to independent sections and change the color of a specific section of the car's exterior by itself. For now it's still a limited spectrum between black and white. I'm sure in the future we may see other shades. Another interesting thing about technology is that it uses no power. While the particles are stuck in black mode or white mode, for example, they just stay there. They don't move and therefore they don't use any power. Now I know this sounds exciting in theory, but we have to be realistic here. Technology this advanced is expensive, and that means that if you were to dent or scratch your car with this color changing technology, you're looking at one huge repair bill. Since this technology is still new, we also don't know how long it'll last before it needs to be replaced, and that adds another layer of cost. This technology could potentially have a big impact on the car theft world, in a negative way. Imagine a cop chasing a red stolen car down the road, but then the car changes colors and the cop can't spot it anymore. The car thief just needs to switch the license plate and then he practically has a new car. Let's say you're looking to buy a car and there's one thing being offered at a good deal, but the problem is the color is one you hate. It might make you wonder if you should buy the car and then wrap it, but is it worth it? Or let's suppose your car is old and needs a new paint job or touch up, should you wrap it? Well here's what you should know before you make your decision. First of all, you can't just wrap any old car. Sure, wrapping your car can cover up an unpreferred color, but if your car is scratched or has noticeable imperfections, you'll notice it even after the car is wrapped. Also, if your paint on the car you have now is starting to flake or oxidize, it'll be hard to wrap the car to make it stick and stay on. And that's why many wrap shops will tell you to repair scratches or dents before you get your car wrapped. Now, if you want to wrap your car, be prepared to shell out anywhere between $1,400 to $7,300, depending on the size of your car and color you choose. If you have a pricey car, expect a pricey wrap. And if you go for a chrome or metallic finish, expect to see prices in the higher end of the spectrum. Now, a properly maintained car wrap can last up to five years, but if you're not careful, you can inadvertently shorten its lifespan. For example, leaving your car out in the sun for too long can dry out the vinyl wrap. Road salt and extreme temperatures can also damage your wrapped car. And also be very careful about taking your wrapped car to a drive through car wash. Instead, it's better to use a microfiber towel to keep the wrap clean. That said, if you really must take it to an automatic car wash, just make sure the water pressure is below 2,000 PSI, the water temperature is below 176 degrees, the pressure washer uses is a spray nozzle with a 40 degree wide spray angle pattern, then the nozzle is kept at least one foot away and at a 90 degree angle. So let's face it, you're never going to be able to check off that. Just stay away from car washes with a wrap. Now the advantage of car wraps is that they're customizable, so your car can be as unique as you want it to be. Also, vinyl car wraps can protect the car's original paint from small chips and dings. Car wraps are also removable and typically won't damage the paint underneath if you later choose to remove the wrap. They're also quicker to apply than getting a new paint job in your car. Most vehicle wraps can be installed in as little as one or two days. But it has its downsides too. If you decide to go for a cheaper wrap, you're going to get low quality material, which will be evident if you try to wrap the car yourself. Basically, you get what you pay for. Also, if you scratch or scuff a car wrap, the wrap will lose its finished appeal and even start to lose its protective element. 
Speaking of trending colors, you might have noticed that there's been a gradual increase of green cars. I'm not talking about lime green, I'm talking more sophisticated shades of green, ranging between olive, sage, pine, forest, and military green. Take for example, the Subaru Forester and Outbacks that come in autumn green metallic, or the Dodge Charger in the F8 green exterior paint. But here's the thing, green is a really hard color to get right. If you mix too much yellow into green, it's too avocado. And who wants an avocado car? If you mix too much blue, it's unappealing like St. Patty's Day. Too much white or gray, it looks like putty. And then you have to have the perfect combination of pigments to get the most appealing green. I find the best green out there ever is found on 2022 and 2023 Lexus models, like the RX and LX. Lexus calls it Nori Green Pearl. Somehow Lexus really nailed the perfect green combination. It's actually rare to see Nori Green Lexuses on the road, since grayscale colors aren't number all cars. Plus, this particular green is relatively new. But next time you spot a Lexus and Nori Green, you'll see it's quietly bold and masculine, and maybe you'll agree it's refreshing to see a new shade of elegance on the road. But now, you tell me, which car stats in today's video surprised you? What do you think is the best car color? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.